Alright guys, welcome back. Uh, here we are again working on the CLSX501. This is going to be the last part of this video on weathering the covered hopper now. We've gotten most of the patchwork and decal work done. We're pretty much ready to start actually weathering this car. Now, what we're going to need to start working on is the heavy grime coat that's on the sides, the roof, the underbody, and the ends of this car. Uh, as you guys remember in the prototype photos, this car got pretty heavily rusted up being that it's a uh, solid aluminum sides it got rutted up pretty well, and the salt obviously didn't help that either, uh, really oxidizing and corroding everything as well. Uh, but I'm going to be backdating this a little bit so that it's not as rusty, basically, is my idea here. I want to try to make it look a little bit cleaner. So I'm going to be using acrylic in the airbrush to spray off the car sides, the roof, the ends, all that. And then when I'm done, I'll clean off the patching, make it all clean again. I'm really not trying to weather the patching too much here. I still want, to, again, to make it look relatively fresh, so I'm going to try to be careful about covering all that up. So we'll go ahead and get into this, and we'll get into all the fun aspects of the weathering and really get to see this car come together in the end here. Okay, here's a good look at the acrylic mix I'm going to be using. This is uh, mostly earth brown with just a drop of black, and I've mixed it with my isopropyl alcohol, 70% isopropyl alcohol. And I got my airbrush set up at 40 PSI. You can see my little compressor down there. And these are the paints I'm using, obviously Anita's brand. I prefer the Anita's acrylics because of the consistency. They're usually pretty thick, and I prefer my acrylics a little bit thicker. Uh, not so runny. Uh, these are really nice to dilute and use full strength as well. So that's what I'm using for this, and I'll go ahead and start spraying the sides of our car. Okay, obviously doing it this way, you're not going to be able to avoid getting paint on some of this patchwork that maybe you don't want the paint on. Uh, but with the airbrush, I've been able to adjust it to its finest position and setting with the needle to get a really fine spray pattern here. And again, with properly diluted acrylic, uh, you can get in here pretty tightly. I'm just going to be working in between these panels above this white patching to get this grime color in. So you can see how fast this color will actually transition over. And I'm just carefully working this color in on all the areas that are still the bare uh, old gray color. So you can see how fast that actually transitions over. It does not take much paint and I don't want to overdo it. So just taking my time with this and going in very, very carefully. Alright, it's a little bright, but you can see what we got so far. You can see I got the really nice dark brown rust color on the entire model now. I finished the end bays, uh, end slopes, underbody, both sides, roof, that whole thing there. And it's looking pretty good. It's nice and even. Uh, the coating looks really good. If I actually set this back, I'll try to zoom in a little bit here. It's not really showing too well, but you can kind of see what I've been going out here. So after I got all this done, I did not seal this in with dull coat. What I did first was I took a Q-tip, I cleaned off the patch areas, being careful not to hit the painted areas, and I used a micro brush with finer detailed spots, things like that, and cleaned all that up so that the patching looks relatively fresh. You can see, if you actually look at the side of the car, the patching is basically untouched, and that's how I want it. Uh, and it's the same thing with the end patches as well. As soon as I painted the paint on, I just took a Q-tip, cleaned those off. And it's the same thing on both sides and ends. So what we're going to do now is dull coat this. I'm going to let this sit overnight, and then tomorrow I'll come back and we can start layering on some fine washes, do some streaking uh, with uh, the oils, things like that, uh, to really tie this together. But we're almost done now. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and try to wrap up the underbody here before we start working on the more complex detail work on the sides by finishing the underbody with the kick-up spray and the final grime wash. And to do the final grime wash, I'm going to be using some Windsor & Newton oil paints here. This is the burnt umber color. This is my color of choice for doing uh, dark, rusty underbodies of rolling stock, anything like that, on these covered hoppers. I'm going to be using a small, medium brush here with soft bristles to apply the paint. And the great thing with water mixable oils is that they blend very nicely. I'm just looking for a very light wash here, so I just load my bristles up with some of the oil paint like that and I have a mixing bowl of water in the corner that I like to just take some of this paint on and I'm just gonna mix this together in relatively gradual layers and it doesn't really matter exactly where you start I like to start with the uh, base and I just like to take this color and I start applying it in a very thin wash to start and I'm just gonna start very carefully brushing this all over this end bay and I want complete coverage here so I'm just going in and I'm applying this paint and if I need to add a little bit more water I will 
just to get a basic good coverage on this entire piece. I want this all to be covered with this wash. Uh, if we need to, we can repeat this wash process too to get the exact color that we need. In this case, it's a relatively lighter brown, rusty wash that I'm going for for this particular prototype, so one layer should be good on this, but you can of course follow up with multiple layers on your model uh, to get the look that you need. Okay, so I got the oil applied to the bottom. You can see we have the right tone of rust on the underbody now, and it's looking pretty good. I let it that dry for a few hours, and I've reinstalled the trucks now. You'll recall that I uh, had weathered the trucks in advance. You can see I got them installed, and I finished the weathering, and I went ahead and added the little patch-out blocks to the truck frames on all of these as well, just like the prototype has. The only thing these will get later will be the powder work when we get to that. So moving on now, we're going to have to start weathering the car body and the roof. We're going to go ahead and start with the roof now. So for the top portion of the car, I'm again using my Windsor & Newton Burnt Umber Oil Paints. And I have a variety of brushes that I'm going to be using, and mainly small brushes. Uh, this is going to be our main applicator here, this nice thin medium brush with soft bristles. And then I got some smaller brushes for uh, detailed application. Uh, in particular with hopper cars, it's very important that you get underneath these roof walk supports because if you don't, you'll see shadows of unpainted areas, which is very unrealistic. And this can make it a great deal of a challenge uh, for any modeler trying to weather modern covered hoppers like this that have these really nicely detailed photo etched roof walks because you can see this. Unlike some of the older cars like the Acurail and uh, Athern Blue Box cars that had molded walkways um, that you can remove, these can't be removed. So you have to basically compensate for that by working around all of these roof walks with small brushes to get underneath. And I'll demonstrate how I do that when we get to it. But for the first part of this, we're going to be working on getting the area around these hatches covered up. And I'm not so much aiming for the hatches themselves. I'm going to be working around them. I'm going to do some different kinds of effects uh, for the actual hatches because they always weather differently than the actual car body because most of the time these are not metal. These are uh, plastic. Um, some of these older hatches might have been metal. I think some of them were, but um, yeah, for the most part, I think these on this particular car were upgraded or replaced after a certain point in time. Anyway, I'm using my medium brush here with a little bit of oil and a relatively heavy wash. And I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to go ahead and start applying this, and I'm scrubbing it very gently underneath this hatch. So, as I go along, I'll kind of keep stretching it out. Now, I'm not trying to dilute this down too much, but I don't want it to be extremely strong either but as I go I'm just stretching this paint out like this and working it around and I'll hit this up at uh, various other angles too now that we've gotten all the paint underneath the roof walks we need to go ahead and stretch this back out and I want to keep my strokes pretty uh, pretty fine here so what I'm doing is going in with the fine brush again and I'm doing individual little strokes of paint if we need to we can take some of this out and thin it back out with a little bit of water and blend it a little bit so you can take some of this paint uh, like this, start at a very specific little point, and then just go back and stretch it back out like this. Take a little bit more of that paint off. Something like this. It's pretty realistic and pretty prototypical to how the runoff kind of channels some of this rust and grime over the sides. So let's go ahead and start working on these hatches a little bit. I've cleaned them off from any residual oil paint because I don't really want too much on these and I've already uh, weathered them enough with a little bit of a acrylic wash that I don't want to overdo it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a Q-tip that I've dipped in water, but you can use alcohol as well. And I'm going to take this Q-tip and I'm just going to gently scrub along the top of the hatch like this to reveal some of that under uh, paint coat underneath some of this grime. I'm trying to replicate some fine chipping effects uh, there's multiple ways to do chipping effects. This is just one of them, and it's just a matter of actually recycling uh, the underlying paint coat instead of adding paint to this and then working it away. Uh, and the key here is just to keep working certain areas to get different variations of chipping. And you got to give this patience and time as well because it does take a little bit of time to do this. Just be patient. Be uh, careful not to overdo it because it is very easy to overdo it. I'm just looking for very, very subtle chipping here. Not anything too crazy here. If you don't like the effect of the chipping on this and need to actually heavy it up a little bit, switch to alcohol. But remember that the alcohol is going to take a lot more paint off a lot quicker, so you need to be very careful with that. I like the control that I have with the water uh, because it's very small chips, which is what I'm going for on the prototype here. The next fun step here is to do some uh, differences in the roof walks 
you can see some of these are a little bit rustier than others. What I like to do is just come in with my medium brush and I'll just brush over some of these and add a little bit heavier rust patches on certain parts of these roof walks just for some color variation, some difference. Now I'm going to start taking the oil paint and I'm going to start slowly working it down the sides and you do need to exercise a little bit of care. I, in this case I don't want to uh, get too much of this paint on the patching. Some will bleed off onto it but all we got to do is go back and clean that up later. Uh, that's honestly a little too much paint. The wash that I'm going for on the side of this car is going to be kind of light so in a case like that I actually applied too much paint off the rip and I'm just going to go ahead and kind of fan that back out a little bit because I don't want too much paint on the side here. Uh, so I'm just going to start just here in the corner and I'm going to slowly start to uh, work this paint down like this very gently. I'm going to keep all my strokes vertical. You can see a little bit of that paint did just get up on the patching but again like I said we'll clean it up later. It's very easy to clean up this oil paint and I'll show you guys how to do that. Here's a good close-up of this wash that I'm applying. You can see how thin it is, and I'm keeping the paint moving as I go down, and I'm stretching it over that patching, and I'm keeping all of my brush strokes vertical. The next step here is to go ahead and start painting some of the finer streaks that are on the sides of this car. Uh, and I'm modeling this again. Remember, it's backdated a couple years, so I'm modeling the streaks just as they were starting to kind of work down the sides of the car over the stock grime. I'm again using my Windsor Newton oil paint here, and I got my fine tip uh, brush here. This is a 5.0 here. Um, I could use an Atlas brush as well for this, but in this case, I just start in one corner, and I just want to have some of these individual little streaks. Again, just in the little areas above the patching, not so much over the patching, uh, because I've modeled the car here with the patching being fresh. Uh, but I have really good control with this brush because the bristles are very soft. And so all I got to do is just go down the side of the car like this. Now, uh, if you guys can see that, it does not take much paint at all to do this. You just go down with a little bit at a time, and less is more here. You're not trying to paint extremely defined lines. I'm wanting these to be very soft. Matter of fact, what I'll do if I have to, um, I'll go in with a larger brush, wet it down, and I'll run over these streaks to blend them out just a little bit more. But I just want some very fine streaks here that are very soft, uh, but you can still see them is what I'm trying to go for here. Here's our fine streaking done now. You see it all looks really good, all the individual little streaks. It's perfect for the prototype. And then I just cleaned up the patching after I did all that. And then on the ends, I went pretty heavy on the end cages because the end cages on the prototype are very rusty, but you can see that on both ends. There's this end here, the non-break end. And then on this end, the break end. So that's two coats of oils on that, layered very nicely. And it all looks really good. And again, there's the streaks on this side as well. So everything is coming along really well on this car. And uh, just a fun fact, I uh, was able to backdate this car. The patching on this particular model was done in 2005, uh, right in the era when safety striping started getting mandated. So that's the era I'm picking to uh, basically represent this car. And it works perfectly too. You can see what the amount of grime we have on the sides compared to how, what it looked like in 2009. I think it's a pretty good match. Uh, so it works out really well. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna leave this to dry for a few days set it aside and then we'll come back and we'll start doing the powder work and we're pretty much done.